When it comes to people who have destroyed their own careers, Jack Thompson ranks among the highest. And that is because he's a lousy excuse for an activist and a lousy excuse for a lawyer. Through his entire career and time as a lawyer, he has done nothing but prove how much of a fool he is. And for those who haven't heard about Jack Thompson or what Jack Thompson has done, allow me to take you on his little crusade through life. Now, you might be wondering, what is this all for? Why does Jack do this? Well, you have to keep in the mindset of Jack's entire career. This has always been about for the kids. His targets against rap music, against Howard Stern, his beef with Neil Rogers, and against video games. All have been for getting rid of the obscenities in these things so that the children can listen easy. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Jack, but not everyone is out here listening to the Beach Boys. I'm sorry. Now, a little bit of background on Thompson. As I mentioned before, he grew up in Cleveland, Ohio. I'm really sorry about that, by the way. He would actually go on to attend some very prestigious universities, like Vanderbilt University Law School. Yeah, it's no Harvard or, you know, Yale, but it's still up there as a good university. I've only seen good reviews about it. But he also had his own political talk show back when he went to Denison University, which I'm pretty sure was only allowed by the school board as some sort of ambient for the kids who couldn't sleep that night. But after that, he would eventually meet his wife, move to Florida, and he would become a lawyer and a fundraiser for a Christian ministry. I should also mention that Thompson is such a hardcore devoted Christian that he makes God look like an atheist. He is so cracked down on Christianity that you would have thought he was there when the Romans put Jesus on the cross. He is wild. But to begin his whole escapades, in 1988, Thompson would actually start a feud with a radio host named Neil Rogers for playing a parody song that was titled Boys Want to Have Sex in the Morning. And he sued them for violation of this and said that it was obscenity somehow. When I'm pretty sure you, as long as you're given the rights, you can play whatever song you want on your radio station. I mean, it's not like you have a country radio station out here blaring rap. No, this was probably a radio station dedicated strictly to rap, even if I look it up now. Yeah, I can't find exactly what music they play on their radio station, but I guess they're kind of a variety and they just play what they want to play as long as they have the rights but this didn't stop good old jackie boy now this got way out of hand really fast as when jack decided to sue the radio station callers started calling into the radio station insulting jack and harassing him now this led to the terms of an agreement with the station that are so wild you wouldn't even believe them that they would have to pay Jack $5,000 every time his name was mentioned, and that totaled to $200 million in the lawsuit. That is a lot of money. Wow. Jeez, that yikes. Now, it should also be stated that during all this, that Jack put a lot of pressure on the FCC and persuaded them to you know, put a $10,000 fine for playing the song Boys Want to Have Sex in the Morning. And from there, it they documented that 40,000 times his name was mentioned. 40,000 times. Jeez. My God. If your name is mentioned 40,000 times, you really are becoming public enemy number one. My Lord. Now, while we can poke fun of Jack at this point, we kind of have to get into the serious things where Jack actually ruins people's lives and makes a fool of himself while doing it. And we're going to start with Janet Reno and kind of ease our way into the more serious, serious things that he did. Janet Reno was someone who actually run, ran at a time to be the state's attorney assistant. That would be the state's attorney general assistant. And she had a couple run-ins with Jack at the time, and according to a police report that Jack filed, she had put her hand on his shoulder and said the line, I'm only interested in virile men, that's why I'm not attracted to you, Jack. This led to him filing a full police report for battery, nonetheless, for touching him. Apparently it's a crime to touch good old Jackie boy. 
thankfully this was dropped because it's just a BS allegation and a complete mockery. But this shows the absolute soy boy that is Jack. Now, while it is stated that battery is a criminal offense involving unlawful physical contact distinct from assault, which is an act of creating apprehension of such contact, again, it seems like a complete over-exaggeration. Battery would be touching someone beyond them telling you they don't want you touching them. Because, you know, that would be... Because how are you supposed to know that person doesn't want you to touch them? That's what I'm going to say at the end of the day. But since then, Jack really had it out for Reno. And in 1990, after he had lost an election to her, Thompson went unhinged, like full mask off queen. Thompson began a campaign against the Switchboard of Miami, which is kind of like a social service group that kind of helps people dealing with suicide and depression and all that. It's kind of like a suicide hotline, but just with more benefits. Fun fact, I never knew this, but you actually need to be certified by the American Association of Suicidology to be able to work a suicide hotline. That's kind of interesting, if you ask me. The more you know. But Thompson, after learning that Reno was a part of this group, had charged the group with the crime of placing homosexual educational tapes in public schools. I, I don't know either. I think Jack's just really gone insane. The switchboard responded by asking the Supreme Court of Florida to make Jack submit to a psychiatric evaluation. Unfortunately, Jack did pass. And he somehow turns this into a gloating point by saying, I am the only officially certified sane lawyer in the entire state of Florida. Yeah, but you're also the worst. This next section comes with a bit of trigger warning because it has to deal with school shooting, but it really shows how much of a horrible human being Jack is. On December 1st, 1997, Michael Cornell, a 14-year-old high school freshman, would walk into Heath High School, the school he attended, with concealed firearms and sadly take the lives of three women as well as wounding five of them. There was no actual pattern to who he was shooting, and Michael even states that he didn't know who he killed until long after it was over and he read about the names in the paper. Michael didn't go down guns a-blazing, he actually surrendered to police and the school principal at the time, and was actually quoted saying, please kill me, I can't believe I did that. Showing that Michael did have remorse for what he did, but Michael did have a breaking point at one point. When asked about this, he accumulates that it was a, a mount of a lot of things, from a false delusion that his parents didn't love him when they did, to him being teased at school, to high schoolers calling him gay because, you know, it's childish insults. It's high school. Michael did stand trial for this and was found guilty and was even denied parole a lot of times. And he even tried to go with a mentally ill claim at one point. I don't think that even stood a chance in court. But on half of the lawsuit, Thompson would represent the parents of the three students killed in that shooting and accumulate everything Michael did not to mental illness, but to video games, adult websites, and oddly enough, a videotape of the Basketball Diaries? Sure. They sought out $33 million in damaging, uh, uh, making allegations that the producers of the games, movies, and operators of the internet site were negligent and at fault for Michael's actions. Yikes. Thompson does claim that games like Doom, Quake, Castle Wolfenstein, Redneck Rampage, Nightmare Creatures, Mech Warriors, and Resident Evil were all found in Michael's possession, and I hadn't even heard of three of these, but again, this is him alleging these are all leading up to Michael doing these heinous acts. But at the end of the day, the lawsuit was filed and dismissed by the federal court because they found no legally recognizable claim and that Cornell's actions were not reasonably foreseeable by the defendants or by anyone in that case. And from there, I could only assume that the victims' families are rightfully angry with Thompson for basically hijacking this and making it all about video games bad. 
Now, at this point, if you still have respect for Jack Thompson as a human being, as a lawyer, as some sort of renowned religious Christian, then congratulations. You're the most blissfully ignorant person I've ever met, and I congratulate you on that. But we are not yet done, because Jack is about to go on his best crusade yet. That probably lands him the most foolish recognition known to man. He is going up against the grand, one of the granddaddies of gaming, Take-Two Interactive. For those who don't know, Take-Two Interactive runs Rockstar, and Rockstar is behind great titles such as Grand Theft Auto, Bully, you might even know them for Manhunt at some point. But my god, this escapade goes on a while. And I want it to be clear that for the next three years, starting in February 2003 and ending September 2006, Jack is going to go to five different cases in five different states, all testifying as the main prosecutor against w many cases that range from hit and run to first degree murder. And he's always going to play it as the same thing he's been protesting this entire time. That video games are the main cause of all these. You know what? At this point, there's, there's only one thing. Thing that could actually quote up the entirety of Jack Thompson's existence. And ironically, it's from a game. It's from Far Cry 3. You've probably seen it. Can I ever tell you what the definition of insanity is? Insanity is doing the exact same fucking thing over and over again, oh, shit. expecting shit to change. That is crazy. The first time somebody told me that, I don't know, I thought they were bullshitting me, so boom, I shot him. The thing is, <laughs> okay, he was right. But with that, let's actually dive into these cases. And there's not really much to take away from all these other than that they get dropped by what we've heard a thousand times before from this point, is that there is no link between the games and the violent acts that are committed there just isn't it 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 just isn't there is no link that is what they constantly try and reinforce in jack's psyche but he refuses to listen he refuses to face facts and again i mentioned this earlier he is not a psychologist he has not taken any degrees in psychology he is a lawyer first and foremost and secondly a devoted christian in fact, you know what, we'll put Devouted Christian right above Lawyer. But we're actually going to come back to one case because it actually plays a key role in Jack's downfall. And that is the case of Devin Moore. Now, I won't get into the details of Devin Moore's case. Just know that it's a really, really sad case where the on behalf of families of police personnel who were killed by Devin, they were represented by good old Jack Thompson. And again, he would, they claim he was a compulsive Grand Theft Auto player. And it ran into a dispute, and while the case got closed, it was found there was no link. They found no evidence that video games were involved in this crime. That there was no absolute concrete evidence that Grand Theft Auto played a role in making Devin Moore kill these officers. That's just that. Devin Moore is still... A horrible person who killed people let that be known but at this time this is Jack's third case is a third case out of five and he still has two more to go but these five cases actually made take to react to him a whole year later on March 14 2007 which they basically just said Jack you gotta stop you gotta stop this endless crusade it's getting nowhere and all you're doing is really trying to hurt our business and somehow, in, in in all his glory, Jack sees this as a win. <laughs> He's quoted saying, I have been praying, literally, that Take-Two and its lawyers would do something so stupid, so arrogant, so dumb, even dumber than what they have done to date. What? Release ground-hitting franchises like Grand Theft Auto, like, like, like Bully? What, what is this? What is this? win that you somehow take out of this i don't see it chief I, I i just am not reading this right or somehow but jack takes this as a win and 
while this is two years after his whole bully incident, we will talk about how Jack tried to take on bullying. Now, for those who haven't played Bully, it follows Jimmy Hopkins, who is left at Bullworth Academy, a primary school, after he's kicked out of his main school and his mother and stepdad go on a vacation. It's clear that Jimmy's parents don't care about him and that he's kind of alone in this world, and he has been from the very beginning. And you play Jimmy throughout the entire year that he spends at Bullworth. You try and bully your way to the top of the school after befriending a man named Gary who eventually does a plot twist and betrays you. I know, spoiler alerts, but the game's been out forever and if you haven't played Bully, I highly recommend it because it is a good title. But Thompson hated this game. Almost hated it as much as he hated <laughs> Grand Theft Auto. But the way he describes it, my god, it sounds like he's describing like biblical acts of you know debauchery. This game, it, it, it shows you how to bully. You take over a school. You punch people. Well, yeah, the game's called Bully. You hit them with slingshots, yes. Not even the worst thing. You hit people with bottle rockets in that game as well. You dunk their heads into dirty toilets. There's white on black crime in the game. That You could say the same thing about Grand Theft Auto, my guy. You could say the same thing about a lot of games. And I will say, in Bully, the big black jocks, they destroy you. I, I'm not even kidding. Whenever you're trying to go to gym class, the jocks destroy you. And it was always like this tanky black guy that was on the jocks team that absolutely destroyed me. I couldn't even, like, damage his health. I had to, like, camp him with bottle rockets. God, what a bad time. I'm having PTSD flashbacks of just trying to get to gym class and them tackling me to the ground and beating me relentlessly. You bludgeon teachers and classmates with bats. It's absolutely nuts. Nuts indeed. Thompson then went on to double down on this and sued not only Walmart and Best Buy, but Target, Circuit City, Rip and Rest, GameStop, and Toys R Us, seeing how they would all try to release the game and sell copies of it. This eventually went nowhere, and Thompson didn't really take much by it. He still thinks that they're being sold to children when it's an M title. Now, keep in mind this is during a time where you didn't really need the state ID rule. You could sell really anything to anyone. It is morally wrong to sell games like this, but I think even back then they still asked you, you know, are you old enough to play this game? Because, again, it's an M-rated game. Why would you sell it to a toddler? Nowadays you need to give, like, state ID and all that, I think. I hope so. I hope they put some precautions on this. But again, that doesn't stop parents who are blissfully ignorant about video games to, to buy them for them. You know, they're buy it because it's like, what's the worst can that could happen? Thompson also criticized Bill Gates for allowing Xbox to have a copy of Bully be allowed on their system. And as you can guess, this went nowhere. Yikes. Huh. I, I, at this point, I just wish Thompson would give up. Now, while we could spend hours talking about Jack's continual hatred of video games and his continual acts of lobbyism and activism against gaming, as well as a lot of other stuff that he is very passionate about, we just don't have time for it. Like, I would love to talk about the whole Manhunt case where he sought 50 million euros in wrongful death claims against Rockstar and Sony for a murderer wrongly accused of having a copy of Manhunt in his apartment. Yeah, I, I don't know either. That didn't really work out either. But I do want to talk about October in 2006. This is a month after he has done enough Grand Theft Auto cases that no one's hiring him anymore. He goes after Midway Games. Midway Games for those who don't know, created the Mortal Kombat series. And this is more specific to Mortal Kombat Armageddon. For those who don't know, Mortal Kombat Armageddon has a customer creation that you can basically just create a goofy little character and fight instead of using Scorpion or Sub-Zero or, God, what was the Lava Dude's name? I don't know. Oh, you could also be Onaga if you wanted, uh, I, if that means anything to anyone. But Jack had wrote them a letter claiming that they needed to cease and desist because of all things, and you would never guess this, 
that they were illegally profiting off his likeliness because the game could use the character creation option to make a character who looked like Thompson. He ceased and desisted them because of the potential that someone was going to create a Jack Thompson character and fight Raiden with that. What? You can make John Cena. You can make Jerry Garcia. You can make the Kool-Aid Man for all I care. Do you see them cease and desisting? Yes, there's a potential to create a lot of characters, but it's hard to see it through the old-fashioned 2006 pixelation. My guy. Those people still had square hands back then. Get over it. And while he does go on to actually speak on a lot of documentaries, like he spoke on 60 Minutes in the aftermath of the Columbine High School shooting. For those who don't know, during Columbine there was found evidence that the shooters did make one-to-one -one scale replicas in the Doom custom, custom map maker, which is just horrific, to actually do run out, rundowns through the school. But through that, he constantly just made, makes a fool of himself, again saying, games are to blame. Games are to blame. And while I would love to talk about his whole beef with Howard Stern, it's kind of cut and dry. Howard Stern being inappropriate on the air. Jack don't like that. Jack fight back. But that brings us to the closing arguments of this. Jack's disbarment. Now, you're probably wondering, how does Jack get disbarred? Well, in February 2007, he gets disbarred over the allegations of, and if you said professional misconduct, you were right. There were many complaints filed in claiming that Thompson had made defamatory false statements and attempted to humiliate, embarrass, harass, and intimidate people. I don't know how that scrawny little man intimidates people, but okay. And according to one complaint, and this is absolutely wild, he accused Albert Cardenas, I believe I said that right, of distributing child pornography. Alberto, at the time, was the judge who presided over the Devin Moore case, a case in which they found there was no link to Jack's claims that video games were to blame for all this. Jack, of course, fought back, but in the end, lost because he's a fool. Now, while we could go through the entire disbarment hearing that Jack has to endure as his character gets absolutely demolished and his entire career destroyed in front of him, I believe the only part I want to focus on is the end statements on July 8, 2008, where they recommended a permanent disbarment of Jack, as well as a $43,000 fine and punishment for it. And the Supreme Court is taken so far back by this, they are cited saying, a, cum a cumulative misconduct and repeated pattern of behavior relentlessly forced upon numerous unconnected individuals, a total lack of remorse or even slight acknowledgement of inappropriate conduct, and continued behavior consistent with previous public reprimand over a very extended period of time involving a number of totally unrelated cases and individuals. The respondent has demonstrated a pattern of conduct to strike out harshly, extensively, repeatedly, and willfully to simply try to bring as much difficulty, distraction, and anguish those he consider is in opposition of his causes. He does not proceed with the guidelines of appropriate professional behavior, but rather uses other means available to intimidate, harass, or bring forth public disrepute to those whom he perceives opposes him. And nothing could speak more truth about Jack. He believes he's a man against the world, and that everyone who is against him must be punished and suffered through all types of character assassination. And from there, he's no more. Jack is no longer a lawyer. He still to this day does not consider any wrongdoings and to this day still fights the courts on video games and how they are evil and how all these acts are somehow linked back to video games. But to this day no one really gives Jack the time or attention that he needs to kind of keep himself relevant but instead they pop up every now and then with, of course, Grand Theft Auto 6 coming out. The Verge did an article on him and how he still has an axe to grind with the gaming industry. But after that, Jack is as powerful as a cotton ball punch. And that does it. That is the entire foolish history of Jack Thompson. Well, not entire. There's still a lot of things one could go over in Jack's history, but 
I think we did a very good blanketed sweep of why Jack Thompson is one of the worst human beings on the planet. He's a horrible lawyer, a horrible activist, and above all, a horrible human being. Thank you everybody so much for watching. If you want to see me do more of these kind of videos, I will in the future. They just take a lot of time to get to. But once again, thank you so much for watching. And as always, I'll see you next time.